Hi, this is Mark from ITCU Solutions, and today I want to go over how to configure a Fortisich Switch 124E in standalone mode. And we're going to do this inside of a Cisco network, and we're also going to set it up to manage it from the standard data VLAN instead of using a management VLAN. Um, and so our configuration, as you see here in the lab, is that basically I have a Cisco 1941 router uh, that has the 10.2.2.1 gateway on it. The interface also has a secondary interface for 192.168.1.1 and that will allow us to connect originally with the uh, Fortis switch because the Fortis switch by default has an IP address of 192.168.1.99. Um, also we're going to connect through a Cisco 2960 switch which will be configured for a trunk and for the purpose of this video, when I refer to a trunk, I'm referring to it in the Cisco sense, which is basically just a connection that has multiple VLANs on it. I, uh, when Fortinet refers to a trunk, they're really talking about port aggregation, which we will not be doing in this video. Um, this is a very basic setup for the switch. And so that's basically what the lab looks like. And these will be the IPs when we eventually get the Fortinet configured. The management IP, IP will be set to 10.2.2.4, which will be on my data net VLAN, which will be VLAN 3. So let's get started. Uh, the first three tasks we're going to do is we're going to change the host name. We're going to change this, the management IP to 10.2.2.4, which will be on my VLAN 3, my lab VLAN 3. And we're going to add some v a couple VLANs to the VLAN database, namely a data and a voice VLAN. And the way we do this is we open up a browser. And you're just going to type in HTTPS colon slash 192.168.1.99. That is the default IP of the Forta switch. And that will pop up your login screen. And the default username is just admin. Whoops. And the default password is blank. And when you go to log in, it will make you add a password because blank doesn't e meet the password requirements. So I'll add a simple password for the lab. And after that updates, it'll let us log in with the new password. Now in the newer versions of Fortis Switch, it will bring you to the dashboard. And on the dashboard, the easiest way to change your host name as soon as it comes up is basically up here. This is your existing host name, which is also the serial number of your switch. Just click on that. I'm just going to call mine new switch to keep it simple. So we'll update that. And the next thing we're going to do, we're just going to go to Network Interfaces physical and <coughs> on Fortis switch the management interface is called internal um, I didn't expect this to happen but I forgot I'm running a DHCP pool on my server in VLAN 3 and since by default the interfaces on the Fortis switch are set up to pull a DHCP address this came up from my DHCP pool but since this is a network device we always set those statically so we'll go in and edit this and we're going to change it to static we're going to change this to dot four and we're also going to do just a class C network and I'm also going to add telnet for testing later on so I can it just makes it easier for me to access it over a management connection so we'll add this Oh, and we won't touch the secondary IP because if we change that, of course, it would kick me off right now. So the last thing, the number three thing in my list was just to add the VLANs to the VLAN database. And like I said, we're going to manage this just through the data VLAN. So I'm only going to add two VLANs. The first one will, of course, be data. Okay. 
next. And we're not going to worry about the rest of this configuration because I'm not going to be using this as a, a layer 3 switch in any way. So we don't have to worry about adding a VIPs to each interface because we're not going to be route using this for routing. We're just going to use it as a standard layer 2. So we can ignore the rest of this stuff and just add this VLAN to the database and the management IP and we'll add a second I mean the management interface and we'll add a second VLAN and we're just going to call it voice and we're just going to use VLAN 4 for the voice VLAN same thing here we don't have to worry about in this so we're going to just add that so now we have the <coughs> host name changed we have change the management IP on the box and we've added our VLANs that we're going to use on this switch into the VLAN database. And if we go back to our diagram, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to add the default route. This is strictly going to be used for management because like I said, we're not going to use this as a layer 3 device in any way. So, but it we do need to add this so we can manage the switch off of its existing subnet. And then we're just going to change the time zone and add a second administrative account. So let's go down to router, config, and you can see I can add static routes if I did want to use this as a layer 3 device. In this case, we're just going to add our default route. And the ID in this case doesn't matter because we're not going to be doing any type of route selection because we're only using it as a default route. And we're doing it on our data VLAN, so the gateway address on that is just going to be 10221 and I'm going to add this okay so now we have our default route <coughs> excuse me the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to go up to system we're going to go to config and we are just going to change the time zone here and the reason I'm only changing the time zone is you can see I do get a correct current time coming up um, that's because my NTP server is already working because I allow NTP out my firewall so it's just hitting the Fortinet NTP server. In your case you might want to change this if you don't allow NTP out your firewall. If your time server is like your local router you might have to put your gateway address in here or whatever time servers that you use. In my case all I have to do is change that default route to the time zone, I mean the, def the, time, the time zone, default time zone to the time zone I'm in. And I'm going to update that. And it will log me off when it does this. That's okay. We'll just log back in. Anytime you change the time. Okay. <coughs> the next administrative task I'm going to do is I'm going to add another administrative user, super user. And the reason I'm doing this is that since I'm logged in as the admin user, I a if I go to edit him, everything's going to be grayed out because you can't make changes to one of your users if you're logged in as that user. So because I'm going to, in this, at least in this example, I'm going to restrict who can access the box. I'm going to add a second user and just put in a password and I'm going to make him a super user uh, in your own environment you might have a bunch of other users that you don't want to be super admin and you can go restrict the scope so for like the professional admin you can change the profiles so they don't have as much access I'm just showing you how to do this uh, so I can show you how to restrict access to the box. So I'm going to just restrict access to uh, my local data class C network. So I'm just going to add that. And so you can see that my new super admin here is restricted only to the class C of my data network, which is where we're going to manage this guy from. Okay. 
just a quick show here. Here's where the profiles are. So this shows what the super user can do. Uh, this is what the, pr you know, if you, if you decide to have different admins, you might want to go in here and, you know, not give them the right to do a whole lot. Maybe they can do something with the network, but not with routing or whatever you're going to let them handle. So this is the last administrative task that I need to do here before we get into the meat of setting up the VLANs, which is the hard part of setting up these Fortinets if you're not familiar with them. So uh, the first thing I am going to do though is just to show you that if I try, if I do log out as admin, and I try to log in as Mark, my other super user, it will not allow me to do it because again, I'm on the 192.168.1.99 network. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video and change my NIC to the 10.2.2 network. And you'll see the reason I can do, do that is because my router, our data network in this case, is actually the 10.2.2 network but there's a secondary address on the switch that allowed me to log in as the 192.168 network to manage the Fortinet for now. So again, I'm just gonna pause the video and change my NIC and I'm gonna log back in on the 10.2.2 network. Okay, I just got done changing my NIC card uh, to be on the 10.2.2 network and I've gone up here and changed my URL to 10.2.2.4 so I can log in. And now I should be able to log in as Mark because I am allowed to log in on the 1022 network. So let's do that real quick. There's no restriction for this. And this also means I could go into my admin user now and also restrict him if I wanted to. Okay, so I could come in here. He should now be See, now I can restrict him. I'm not going to bother to do that, but that's what you normally would want to do in this case. Okay, so now this is going to be a little uh, trickier. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start assigning VLANs to our physical ports. And as you can see in our diagram, our port 1 is going to be our trunk, which is going to connect to port 2 on the 20, 2960, which is already set up as a trunk and that trunk is set up to allow VLANs 1, 3, and 4. So in this case, since Fortinet doesn't use that terminology, I'm going to start switching to tagged and untagged terminology. That's what Fortinet would use. So in this case, we're going to set up, as you can see over here, we're going to use our native VLAN is 1, and then we're also going to um, set up VLANs 3 and 4 is tagged across this trunk. Because a, a tagged, tagged in Cisco speak is, is the same as trunk. You know, basically in, when you send something to Cisco, that just means it has VLAN tags on it. Nothing should be untagged. If it is untagged, it will get forwarded to the, to the native VLAN. So let's go uh, start assigning ports to our interfaces. Okay, so to do that, We'll go down to switch. Hopefully. Okay. So for my trunk, what I'm going to do, and I'll come back to this guy as soon as he pops up here. Okay, so I'm going to leave the native VLAN for the trunk as one because the native VLAN, and for other reasons, on my Cisco device is one. But I do need to allow all my VLANs. So I'm allowing my data, my voice, and then we're allowing the VLAN one, which is uh, kind of a special VLAN that Cisco devices use. Okay. We're not going to worry about untake because this is trunked. Okay, so 
I'm also, this is, we're going to leave spanning tree on, but this isn't an edge port, so we don't have to worry about uh, BDP uGuard. So I'm going to take that off. And I'm not going to worry about the rest of this stuff, because again, it's a trunk port. Okay. Now, for the rest of these, I'm going to come in here. And I'm just going to select all these. And I believe I'm plugged into port 23 right now. I could get myself kicked off here if I'm not plugged into port 23. So, whoops. So what we're going to get, I'm going to just edit I'm going to skip 23 and 24 because I'm actually not 100% sure physically which port I'm plugged into. And in this case, I want my native VLAN set to 3 because these are going to be access ports. And so the two VLANs I'm going to have in these access ports are 3 and 4. 3 is going to be my data VLAN. 4 is the voice. 4 is going to become, is, since its voice will show up as a tagged will be tagged traffic. Three, we want to be untagged. Now, the way Fortinet works is whatever you set up as your native VLAN, that means any traffic that comes in untagged gets forwarded to the native VLAN, which is basically true across every network manufacturer out there, will get forwarded into that VLAN. So in my case, if I have a computer set up and it sends untagged traffic to these ports, it'll get forwarded over to the, the native VLAN. Now, I'm going to add for the outgoing ports VLAN 3. This is actually unnecessary because on a Fortis switch, whatever you set as the native VLAN not only takes care of incoming traffic, so untagged incoming traffic will be forced to VLAN 3. Outgoing traffic on VLAN 3 will also get stripped. I just add this just to keep it easy for me because in theory if I had other VLANs like 5 and 6, maybe I was using for cameras or some, something, I don't know, I cameras wouldn't make sense because you'd take them, but something that needed to be the tag stripped off, I could add those VLANs here. And so that traffic that left, uh, you could strip the tags. Now you can have multiple VLANs when you leave that are untagged because they can get to their destination via IP. The problem is you can only have one native VLAN because if traffic comes in, there'd be no way for the switch to know which VLAN to forward it onto. So this is what we're going to do for all effectively what in Cisco world would be access ports. This is the way we're going to set them up. Set them up. Again, this basically means the native VLAN is 3, so untake traffic, just like an access port, is going to go to the 3 ingoing and outgoing. And we're also going to allow tag ports 4 coming from my phones. Okay. And I'm not going to worry about the rest of this stuff because I'm not going to do any QoS policy. I'm going to push that out to the phones later on. Okay, so we're going to click OK. Hopefully, if I'm not plugged into one of these ports, it will configure this for us. If not, I might have to pause the video and go physically move my cable. Oh shoot. Okay. I'm going to pause the video real quickly. I'm going to go physically move my cable to port 23. Okay, I just physically moved my port to port 23. What happened there is since I was plugged into uh, port 21, basically when I changed this, uh, native VLAN, since this native VLAN is different than this in than the internal management interface, it cut me off uh, because right now any untaked traffic on internal would get forwarded would need to be forwarded to VLAN one for the 1022 on the management VLAN to see it. So I need to change this as well. But of course, since I'm now plugged into port 23 down here. 
This means all my unpaid traffic right now is being forwarded over to VLAN 1, which corresponds with my management interface. So as soon as I change it on my management interface, I'll get cut off again, and I will change the video so I can go physically move the interface back to port 21. So the next step we're going to do is just edit this our management interface as well. And so when I change this, this means that any traffic that comes from an untagged device like the computer, because right now I'm plugged into one of these computers, but I'm plugged into port, physical port 23, whose native VLAN now is 3. Since that's different, the reason I got cut off is that was different than the internal interface, which is my management interface, which now I'm moving to 3, which will effectively move that 10224 network up here onto VLAN 3. But that's going to cut me off as well. So I'm going to click OK. And it will fail. Oh, wait. It hmm, that's interesting. OK. So, oh, I see. OK. So I'm in good shape anyways. Uh, not quite sure. how he's actually oh because he's allowing one on the management interface so <coughs> and my native VLAN is already set on uh, port 20 23 which so we should be good to go there I'm just gonna add it to the untagged as well it won't hurt anything but it doesn't really do anything And I'm going to do it for port 24 as well, just for to make sure they're all complete here. Okay. Okay. So you see now I have my trunk set up where my native VLAN is 1. Everything else is set up for my native VLAN to be 3, which basically means untagged traffic coming in gets forward to 3. My internal management VLAN, any untagged traffic that comes in will get forwarded to VLAN 3, so it will get forwarded to that 10.2.2 interface. Okay, so um, the other thing I want to explain why you have to set it up like this, and you can't come in here and change this port, for example, to a native VLAN 3, like maybe you think you can, that will break things unless you go on to the Cisco switch itself and also change the native VLAN to 3. And let me explain why. Is it The reason you have to set it up this way is that if I came into this physical port here and only on the Fortinet did I ch add that native VLAN 3, when I had traffic leaving on my data VLAN, which is VLAN 3, it would untag it. And so when this traffic leaves and it hits the Cisco, it'll be untagged. The Cisco will forward it over to VLAN 1, which effectively just broke my network because VLAN 1 isn't the, 10 to isn't the data network. It's basically just gone off in the ether and there's no way for it to come back. Now, I could make this work a second way, and that would be by basically changing my native VLAN here to 3 and also changing the native VLAN to 3 over here and that would work because when my untagged traffic leaves the Cisco when it receives untagged traffic would forward it to its native VLAN which is 3 which happens to be the correct data network uh, I wouldn't do that in this situation because it gets a little more confusing because at least in this case kind of the way traditional Cisco network works you don't really want um, untagged traffic flowing across your trunks so in our case, I, in this case, I think you're best off just leaving things, native VLAN, VLAN 1, and allowing port 3 and 4 to be tagged traffic, just like you would expect if you're going Cisco switch to Cisco switch. So this should be effectively set up the way you, your default Cisco switch switches would work. And that's why I would recommend keeping it set up like this. And just 
to verify what I'm telling you works after you've seen this setup um, before we go in and talk about the phones if I go in here and I ping out to Google now Oops. and if I use periods instead of commas that works I should be able to ping my gateway which is on the router which is going across that trunk right and I should also be able to obviously I can ping my management interface because I'm still able to manage it across there and if I log into my router the 1941 router if I tell net off of the port which will automatically use as the source interface 10221 I should be able to do this I'm not sure why it's having a problem Actually, let me see how my switch, Cisco switch is configured. Maybe it's not configured the way I think it's configured. Cisco mode truck. Oh, that's why. Uh, so what's going on? The reason this is failing <laughs> is this isn't configured the way I thought it was configured. But since I have VLAN 3 set up over here, literally he's uh, sort of would work because when I'm sending traffic back, he's untagging it. But the management, it works for everything else except the management VLAN because the management VLAN, or I mean the, the port when it comes across here, it's sending the management, like if I'm trying to send my traffic back from VLAN 3, it's actually going, it's being sent to VLAN 1 because that's my native VLAN, because this is untagging it on the way out. So on the Cisco side, I just need to change this. Oh no, wait, that should, yeah, we just need to change this guy to the native VLAN to 1 so that that data traffic coming back uh, will not, let's see here, do I have the ping set up now? As you can see, I can ping it now, and now with Telnet, Telnet works as well. So you just have to be really careful and make sure you pay attention to what you're doing when you're using, because of the shortcut Cisco gives you with access and trunk ports. Everyone else, now that they, basically follows the RFC uh, across these 8021Q RFC more to the letter. So it gives you a lot more uh, versatility in what you want to do, but it also causes a little more confusion. So you just, you have to make sure that your tagging and everything is the same because the terminology is going to be different. You're going to be using untagged and tag on non-Cisco devices, and you're going to be using trunk and access on Cisco devices, which are really basically shortcuts for doing the same thing. So everything is working here. The last thing I just want to go over real quick is that, so this whole part here is working now. This, the networks are great. This is all you have to do to get your network going. But because in this case, the um, client I'm going to be deploying these in, they do have uh, medium, they do have 
phones that support the L LDP med standard. And so I just wanted to show you if you have that, let's go back to opening this up, what you should do to utilize this. So you want to go to your LDP and if you go look at your profiles, there will be two default profiles. Now, Auto ISL is there will be how your ports are set up by default if you're not using standalone mode. If you're managing this with a, the Forta switches with a Forta gate, all your ports will be set up for the default auto ISL. Um, because we're not, we're using standalone. All my ports are set up by for default. So you could do a couple things here. I would probably recommend in this video. I'm just going to go change the default profile, but I would probably recommend either adding a profile, calling it data and voice or something. If you want to do that, if you want to use that for the primary ports, or maybe add a profile and call it trunk. Uh, maybe you don't. Well, I'm calling it trunk because I'm basically using a Cisco environment. And if you're going to create something called trunk, that would be for the actual trunk to my Cisco trunk, or maybe I'd call this profile for Cisco trunk or something. Um, I don't need any of this stuff, right? If I'm doing just a Cisco trunk, you don't, you're not doing any, you're, you're basically, you don't need the auto SL, ISL, because this is Cisco, Cisco, so it's not being managed by Fortinet. So I could add this and create another profile. Call it what you want. Maybe call it for Cisco trunking or something. Um, and for my default, because that's where my phones and computers are going to be set up, as you see in the diagram here, right? They're going to come in on these ports. And so for uh, I, I want to set up, I want to push down the information to my phones uh, what you know in, in the past a lot of your phones either would use CDP or DHCP to get this information so in this case my voice VLAN is VLAN 4 so the idea here is since these phones um, can handle these these uh, these are med supported phones I can put in and tell the phone hey I want you to move on to VLAN 4 right off the bat so you can hit the DHCP pool there get to your server that way and I could put in a class of service bit that probably doesn't really matter on these networks I, I generally have smaller client clients but if you could put a 5 in there if you really think class of service is going to matter this is your layer 2 class of services for your layer 2 you know all these switches nowadays are non-blocking so you know it's unlikely the traffic is going to get slowed down unless there's something really bad. But what I do want to do, since most of my clients have multiple branches, is I want to make sure that the this differential service bit is set because this is for your layer three to make sure the routers prioritize this traffic. So you could come in for your voice and say four, five, forty-six. I'm just going to leave the priority at zero because I don't really care for most of my clients. But I do want to make sure that their phones end up on the voice VLAN and that they're setting their QoS for layer three traffic at 46 with or express forwarding and Cisco speak so that they go to the top of the list to get forward through because voice can't tolerate delay. Okay, I'm doing this in my default profile just kind of for naming reasons here and um, this is the default profile that you'll utilize if you're setting this up in standalone mode. And if you want to see, uh, how these profiles are on your ports, I'm going to zip over real quick. Okay. So all these ports, like if you go on here, like if I go to port two, hit edit. So if you did switch to something like, you know, phone computers or something, you, uh, you create a new profile or something like that, you'd want to come in here 
and change that here. Okay. And also you want to make sure since you are actually using LLDP that you have the transmit and receive box checked in this profile. So I'm using default LLDP is on and uh, you know this should this should push this information out to the phones because that's what are on those ports. So I can just cancel so I don't have to worry about it. Now for my port one, okay, this is my trunk port. So I don't care about all this voice stuff, right? I don't care about um, this stuff. So I'll just change my profile to trunk, okay? Now, I still might want to use LDP, although from my understanding of Fortinet is it will use CDP if the LDP doesn't work. Uh, so you still might want to have your L LDP on so you can talk to the router, but you don't need the profile to do that. Okay. And, and probably the best thing is since we're using Cisco, instead of trying to rely on using Cisco CDP, I would just go change the port on the Cisco part side to use LLDP for this one dev device. If that's not possible and you have a ton of Cisco devices, then hopefully Fortinet can communicate with CDP or you're just not going to be able to see it in that way. So we'll update that. And this is basically all you have to do for a general sec setup. There's a lot of other things you can do on these switches. They're great switches. And I just want to do a video because I'm assuming a lot of people are trying to install these in Cisco environments. And you might not have the components to manage them with another FortiGate, uh, which a lot of my clients do not. But you're kind of stuck in the situation where you don't want to move to enterprise Cisco switches. They're expensive and you don't necessarily want to use a Cisco small business. So Fortinet is a great product that's kind of in between. I have a lot of clients that are also going to HPE for other, other re similar reasons. But this is a great switch. It, you just kind of have to get your head around, especially if you're kind of an older guy like me who came up on Cisco, that the terminology has changed and you gotta remember Cisco ads, when they do access and trunk, it's basically like a shortcut. You just have to make sure that you pay attention to your tag and untag traffic and you'll be fine using these switches. They're great. We've rarely had problems with them and they really are uh, very good switches. I hope this video was helpful and if anyone has any questions, I do once in a while I'll go look at the, the bottom and if I do see a question, I'll try to answer it. I'm not the best at doing that, but if, if I do see a question, I'll try to answer it. And if you have, if you think I made some mistakes, and the way I'm doing this, this is the way we, we've been doing this. And that seems to work pretty well. But there's always better ways to do things. So I appreciate your time. Have a great day. Thank you.